there, ladies and gentlemen. Are you ready to rock? This is the Noble Heretic here back with a very special episode of Battlefleet Gothic Armada. And why is this a special episode? Well, because this is the last episode of the beta countdown to release. The time of, rec of this recording is April the 19th. The day that you're going to be seeing this, if you're watching this on the day it's uploaded, will be April the 20th, and the game goes into full release tomorrow. If you're watching this from the, from the day of of this upload. Otherwise, it's two days from now. Otherwise, it's in the past if you're watching this after the release. In either case, we're going to finish off our countdown to release with a race that I've never been too crazy about, but I've actually gotten quite addicted to in playing them, and that is the Eldar Corsairs, pointy-eared pirates. So, kind of going through the quick rundown, Eldar ships, they're very quick, they're maneuverable, they, but it's kind of interesting, they have the same sort of issue that the orc ships have in that they can only have a short duration boost, regular speed, and braking speed. They don't have the hard, uh, the uh, powered turns like Chaos in the, or the Imperial Navy, but unlike the orcs, they don't need it. Additionally, the Eldar boost ability is a lot quicker off the, off the trigger than the orc pirates version are, and I believe it might be even be a little bit faster, making it a lot better. They also have the best fighters and bombers, which is actually good because whenever because uh, of something that you'll see down in the negatives. They're less likely to obey, but that's not always necessarily a bad thing. Now, on the downside though, their ships are very fragile. In fact, they have a really weird mechanic in that they don't have shields like all the other factions do. They have hollow fields, which essentially have a percentage to completely negate a hit, but that percentage is dependent on how fast the Eldar ship is moving at the time. So you are kind of up to the whims of RNG when playing Eldar. Now, also, it says in the negatives most weapons on front. Now this actually should be rewritten as all their weapons are on the front. The only weapons that can shoot other than on the front are the fighters and bombers. But on the flip side, though, this isn't necessarily always a bad thing because you can actually get some really interestingly coordinated firepower. Um, in fact, there's one particular weapon, the Pulsar Cannon, that if you coordinate it right, you can actually one-shot escort ships out if you coordinate it properly. And then finally, they're very vulnerable to assault actions, and I also don't think they have good, as good of uh, uh, ability on assault actions on their own, either. So, enough blabbering? Enough blabbering? What kind of language is this? Anyway, let's take a look here. Okay, so as you probably noticed here, just looking at the fleet listings. Oh, and also this is something else new to uh, something else new to the most recent update. Transport ships can now actually be upgraded. Um, in fact, the Eldar transports I've actually added uh, reinforced hollow fields to give them a little bit more survivability. But as you can see, this is a slightly more advanced playthrough. I've already unlocked cruisers and actually gotten a second one. And also, here's one other thing that I guess could also be considered a little bit of a negative point towards the Eldar, in that they seem to have the most expensive escort ships in the game. Um, as you, it's kind of hard to see because that sun is in the background, blocking out the, blocking out some of the lettering. But none of these escort ships are any less expensive than 42 points. Uh, meaning that you're not going to be able to field as many escort ships, especially very early in the game. On the flip side, though, I've found that Eldar escort ships seem to have a little bit more bang for their buck. As I said, it seems that way. I'm not 100% certain if it's actually that way, statistically speaking. But anyway, let's get going. We've got a convoy mission, and we're defending. Ugh, this one's going to be interesting, because I've found Eldar aren't really that great with defending. At least not on the convoy missions. And yeah, let's go ahead and try to uh, show you the Hemlock Destroyer, which have the nice massive pulsar cannon on the front. Actually, I'm wondering if I should have brought more uh, should have brought more of my light cruisers. BRB. Okay, yeah, we're just gonna bring all the cruisers. Okay, so before we get started, I did want to take a quick moment to talk about some of the abilities of the Eldar ships. 
uh, in uh, two in particular. First of all is that Pulsar Cannon I had mentioned. Now the Pulsar Cannon, it acts similar to a torpedo in that it's an active ability as opposed to, you know, just your regular weapons like your, uh, like your shuriken cannons or your macro cannons. It's very, sh it's short range, only about six, I think it starts, I think for escorts it starts at 3,000 meters, but you can upgrade it to 6,000 meters. But they are probably the most powerful weapon that the Eldar have, and this is actually the thing I was using to one-shot escort ships on a previous playthrough. I might even include a little clip of me doing that. Now the other thing here that I've actually found rather interesting is this, the Vols Maneuver. And if I don't explain this later on, I'm, I will now. But the Vols Maneuver allows an Eldar ship to do a complete 180 degree turn without slowing down. Which, since your quote unquote shields, your hollow fields, are dependent on your velocity, being able to turn 180 degrees is actually quite, quite useful. So let's get started and try to get these try to get these poor 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 Oh, I buggered this up. Well, we're going to have to go with it. Uh, they're going to be going straight through the asteroid belt. This is not going to be fun. At your service. Okay, so I took a moment to redeploy because honestly, this is not the greatest map at all. The, there's so many asteroid fields here. And as usual, let's go ahead and start chucking some torpedoes. No, not you. Where's my other big cruiser? There it is. Except for you three, I want you to go around the asteroid belt. Asteroid pocket, really. Yes, come on. No, start moving. Start moving, you idiots. And actually, I'm going to see if we can put these guys into silent yes, running, on. try and keep some heat off. Stealth is the key to success. Back to the main Until fleet. The Oh, halt and Z, you guys turn, and now you're going to see that boost I was talking about. And boost. Oh, and you went right in smack dab into the middle. You idiot ship. That was a stasis field, too. Focus. Oh, this is also something else. Um, the Eldar are one of the few fleets where I would definitely rec recommend not having, uh, or not having focus fire on. Because they really, and because all your weapons are on the front, you don't want them going to a location then having to turn around. Full Sorry, full. have to sh have to shut up for just a moment to get a lead on this shot here. Oh my gosh, that guy is going down so Returning quickly. Infinity circuit to rest. The void is our home now. Oh my gosh. Swiftly. Until the end. Yeah, that Imperial ship is not gonna last. Uh oh. Infinity circuits. Speed up. Try to go through the torpedoes. Ah, good. The Eldar stand ready. So much micromanaging. Micromanage all the things. This is the this is the one other bad thing about Eldar is that you have to be very micromanagement heavy on these guys. Did I lose something? Uh, just an escort. On the flip side, though, um, Eldar escorts, as I had mentioned earlier, they are—they uh, seem to be a bit more powerful, so they're definitely a bit more useful. Yes, Commander. We yeah, they're—they're they're, losing them is a little bit more that damaging works. to your fleet than you know losing, like, say, a Chaos escort. Nope, don't run into that 
Oh my gosh, you guys almost ran into your own merchant ships. The void is our home now. Sorry, I cannot even tell what I'm doing anymore. Well, run out of the way. I'm hearing I'm hearing bad stuff. Okay, sorry. Look have to turn that back on because I cannot tell what the heck is going on here. <laughs> That's what I'm saying about Eldar is that they just have so much going on that it's sometimes really hard to actually micromanage because it's not like you're flying around a ship that um, a ship that does broadsides. You have to aim everything directly at whatever it is that you're shooting. Setting sail. Yeah, I think I'm gonna lose that line ship there. Okay, reconvene. Why are you not moving? Oh my gosh! You idiot of a ship. Why have you had your engines off this entire time? My word. Swiftly. Okay, getting back to the fight. Fighter's out. Where's my other carrier? Yes, oh no, I think I lost that carrier. And... Torpedoes for you! Let's get a look in here and see if, if we can get, some, get that hit. That might have been hard to see, but that was a perfect broadside into him. I lost a turret, but oh well. As you wish. Oh my gosh, this this really really dumb transport ship is going right through the asteroid field and probably taking damage the entire time. Oh my gosh. Are we going to get a success on boarding actions? Oh, we got their captain to run away. Okay, we don't have to worry about you anymore. Hooray. Yes, we obey. Oh my gosh, my combat ships are not doing the well. Is our home now. Yes, Commander. Come on, speed up here. I don't know why the heck you were so far away from the fight. Until the end. Move at full run speed. away, run away. At your service. An Eldar transport has escaped. Oh, I guess we got enough to escape. Oh, that was, uh, <laughs> that was a lot quicker than I thought. And yeah, we lost a line ship. Oh well. I think this line ship has been destroyed like three times. Okay, so I might have to cut in a little bit of extra footage here because that, first of all, that fight went a little quick and unfortunately I didn't get to say everything as far as like what I wanted to say. But then again, as as I'd said several times, Eldar ships are very hard to, to, micro, to field because you have to micromanage them a lot. You only have that 90 degree arc in the front um, that you can actually do damage with. Everything else, you know, your sides are exposed, your rear is exposed, everything. Now additionally, because you don't really have that much along the ways of defenses, you only have hollow fields which mean that you're really dealing with RNG the entire time. Now that wasn't hollow fields. Those are hollow fields. Um, having reinforced hulls are a lot more important on Eldar ships than they are on any other ship. So 
you really have to change your tactics almost completely whenever you're playing Eldar. They don't play like Orcs, they don't play like Imperium, they don't play like Chaos. They are a, a beast unto themselves. Other than that, though, as far as like the upgrade, uh, other as far as the crew upgrades go, they're really kind of the same thing as far as what you want to do. I found that going with the cooldown, uh, the ability cooldown upgrades are the most useful, just because. Well, hey, if you can fire off your torpedoes, you know, twenty percent faster than anything else. Plus, also with those pulsar cannons, since those are going to be your main firepower. Having upgraded spirit stones, I think, wind up becoming more important on Eldar ships than they are upgrading, like, sl say, slaves on Chaos or is it servitors on Imperium? But regardless, even though they are challenging to play with, they are actually very fun to play. The ships, you know, if I have any sort of complaint about the game, it's the fact that the only way that you can actually change the appearance of the ships is by, you know, giving them favors. But anyway, if these are how Eldar play, I kind of hope that they wind up adding Dark Eldar into the game later on. Because the Dark Eldar are just like, they're Eldar, but they're a lot more vicious. And I would really like to see what they have up their sleeves if they ever wind up adding them into, into the game. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this uh, rather chaotic... Uh, not actually intended referencing chaos, but I hope you enjoyed it, this rather crazy not very coherent finale to the countdown to release and I will see you guys in the next video which will like probably wind up being Tron 2.0 that rage fest but I will but next week I will see you guys in the full release of Battlefleet Gothic